Virginia Tech, a team with a brand of ball named for its coach. The Hokies have made non-offensive scoring an art form. Georgia Tech found out about Beamer ball firsthand last year in a 51-7 route. Virginia Tech celebrated while the Jackets could barely stand to watch. But the Ramblin' Wreck rolls into Blacksburg with one of college football's biggest weapons. Calvin Johnson catches everything in sight, and the man that gets him the ball can be a ball of fire himself. Reggie's last chance to beat the Hokies is next. A packed Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. This afternoon, a huge game in the ACC as our ESPN College Football presented by Best Buy brings you a matchup in the Atlantic Coast Conference that has this whole stadium rocking. The Burnt Orange, the Chicago Maroon, 66,000 plus waiting for that man and his team. And they almost never lose at home or in the month of September. They're one of 18 remaining undefeated teams in the country. The 4-0 Hokies of Virginia Tech. Oh, are they ready in Blacksburg? And here they come. of what this team means to this city and this state. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Bob Greasy. We can't find Paul McGuire. The last time we saw him, he was so enamored with Beamer ball, he was still on the field. We'll try to find him in a minute. This is a key game in the ACC. Last year, Georgia Tech came in here ranked in the top 15. Virginia Tech was ranked even higher. And they took Georgia Tech out behind the barn and beat them 51 to 7. They've won two straight over Georgia Tech. But the winner of this game will have the inside track in the Coastal Division. That could mean the inside track to the ACC championship in Jacksonville. Greece, both teams have very good defenses, ranked in the top 20 in the country. With that in mind, somebody's got to make some plays on offense. Well, for Georgia Tech, two things have to happen. Reggie Ball playing his 41st start, making his 41st start of the season. He's been a four-year player. He needs to play well. He's been inconsistent over his career, but playing his best football of his career right now. And, of course, Calvin Johnson. You've got to get the ball, the, the big wide receiver, the All-American. Good things happen when you get the ball to him. For Virginia Tech, it's Sean Glennon, a sophomore quarterback, making his fifth start. He's going up against a pretty good defense. The strength of that offense are the wide receivers. He's going to be missing one, but that doesn't make any difference. All the rest of them are there. They're going to be pretty strong in the wide receiver position. Well, you touch on a key point because this week, Frank Beamer suspended two of his starters, one a wide receiver, one a defensive lineman. They won't play in this game. With more on that, let's get out of the field. Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Hi there, Brad. You're right. Josh Morgan and Chris Ellis did practice this week, but they are not permitted on the field today after being charged with obstructing justice early Sunday morning outside of Blacksburg Bar. Now, Frank Beamer told us Morgan was nearly hit by a car, which is why, according to police reports, he tried to assault the driver and was pepper sprayed when resisting arrest. Ellis was picked up for trying to intervene with the situation. Beamer said it's unfortunate because these guys really are good kids, but I promise every week to make Make the university proud on and off the field, and these players did not handle the situation properly. Morgan, by the way, won't just be missed on offense. He's already had two blocks on special teams already. And, Brad, you might remember, as far as Ellis is concerned, he returned a touchdown in last year's schlacking of Georgia Tech here at Blacksburg. We'll see what kind of effect it has. Chan Gailey has a good record on the road against top-ranked teams. On the other side, Frank Beamer at home, month of September, almost never loses. Something's got to give. Big back in the ACC. Get ready for it. The kickoff, the Hokies and the Yellow Jackets is next. And Jared DeVelli's got it teed up. And back deep for Georgia Tech, Chris Dunlap awaits. 3-1 Georgia Tech, 4-0 Virginia Tech. 2-0 in the conference for the Hokies. And we're set in front of a big-time crowd on a perfect Saturday afternoon. Great kick. Dunlap won't have a chance at this one. He'll take a knee about seven yards deep. 
So Georgia Tech will take over offensively at zone 20. Four-year starter Reggie Ball at quarterback and his coach Chan Gailey talked with us about how he's improved over the years. He's managing the game better this year. He understands where we are, where we have to be. Uh, he understands field position. He understands red zone, turnovers, don't turn it over, can't take the sack, can't take the sack, those types of things. Reggie made some mistakes last year that cost his team points. Georgia Tech really never recovered after a shaky start here in Blacksburg. Back-to-back -back years playing here because of a quirk in the ACC scheduling when the conference expanded. That's why Tech's playing here two years in a row. First down from the 20. Ball. Deep middle, wide open. And it's James Johnson on the run inside the 40. 30. All the way down to the 22-yard line. It's the other Johnson who lights it up for Georgia Tech on the first play of the ball game. 59-yard pass play. Brad, whenever something like this happens on the first play, especially, this is the receiver right here. He's going to go down the middle. Johnson's out here. But whenever something like this happens on the first play of the game, the film study from the offensive team has seen, seen it happen, and they come right to it on the first play of the ball game. So they worry so much about Calvin. They didn't forget about James, or at least they won't now. A career-long catch for James Johnson. First good, down, Georgia Tech. Good throw by Reggie Ball, the first throw of the game. That was not an easy throw. Same formation. Now it's Reggie Ball, quarterback draw. Reggie broke a tackle inside the 15. He's all the way down near another first down at the 11-yard line. Let's take a look at our IBM Star Watch. Calvin Johnson will watch him. He's one of the best in the country. Tashard Choice, the main guy at the tailback spot, but we've already seen Tashard and Rashawn Grant in the same backfield for Georgia Tech on the first two snaps of the ball game. So Reggie gets nine on the quarterback draw, and Georgia Tech is already at the Virginia Tech 11-yard line, second down and one in the opening stanza of the ball game. And now Calvin Johnson's way up there to the top of your screen on second and short. Toss, Choice. First down inside the five, and it's first and goal, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech knocking on the door already as we take a look at our city offensive lineup for you. A lot of experience on Georgia Tech's front wall. One guy that's been a three-year starter, but not on offense, is Mansfield Rotto at right tackle. He played defense up until this time this year. And the rest of that offensive line, all four of them started last year, but they're not real big and physical. All of them under 290 pounds. So far, their finesse has paid off. First and goal at the five. On the ground, Choice got a couple. Orion Martin made the stop from his defensive end spot. So the crowd has been quieted and taken completely out of the ball game in the opening two minutes. Defensively, for Virginia Tech, the guy that's the anchor in there is Nolan Burchett. And the two great linebackers they've got in Vince Hall and Xavier Adibi, their top two tacklers. And they're going to have to button down the hatches right now because it's second down and goal. Georgia Tech at the Hokies' three-yard line. Choice in an eye backfield. Ball's going to throw a fade to Johnson in the corner. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Just like that, the Yellow Jackets take it the length of the field in a matter of a couple of minutes, and Reggie Ball to his favorite receiver, number 21, Calvin Johnson. And a great first drive for, for Reggie Ball. We saw practice the other day, and this they were trying to work on this play all afternoon when we were in practice. Harris, number one, it's 5'10", 5'11", up against the tall Johnson, 6'5". Five, five. Here's the call. After review. Video evidence confirms the call on the field. Touchdown. Tom McCreesh, our referee. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. The I fans like, are booing, but it's the right call. I like I like the being, it being reviewed, and I like how quickly they did review it, and let's get on with the game. Travis Bell comes in for the point after. Just like that, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech are out in front 7-0. 12 minutes and 22 seconds. The All-American looking like one already. Will Virginia Tech have an answer offensively? They haven't touched it yet. 7-0, Yellow Jackets. Ball 
I got to give you credit. You had a better seat for that last touchdown than we did. <laughs> oh, Brad, I'll tell you, Victor Harris, I, I felt so sorry for him because he had no chance at the ball. If you look at Victor Harris on the outside, watch him look back. He has no idea now where the ball is. Now he can't even get to it. I mean, he gives away so much height. And there was just no chance for him. First touchdown allowed in the first quarter in 16 regular season games. That was North Carolina State at the beginning of September last year. So Georgia Tech just blew that statistic right out of Virginia Tech's water. And now Travis Bell, uh, rather uh, Mohammed Yayawi, will tee it up. And Virginia Tech will get its hands on the football for the first time. Eddie Royal and David Clowney. Clowney coming back from uh, emergency appendectomy just a little over a week and a half ago. Uh, nine days ago. Yeah. That's Eddie Royal waiting on the kick crowd has been taken completely out of the ball game in the first couple of minutes. Let's see if the Hokies have an answer. Royal will have a shot from two yards deep. Eddie's out across the 20 found a seam and got out to about the 28 yard line and that is where Sean Glennon will take over the sophomore quarterback that Bob talked about. He says he's been waiting for a game like this for a long time. Very engaging young man that we spent a lot of time with yesterday and obviously if he's been watching games since he was a little kid he meant Paul and Bob not me. <laughs> first down at the 28 yard line and he's going to throw on first down quickly out complete good toss out to Justin Harper. Let's take a look at our city offensive lineup for the Hokies of Virginia Tech a lot of youth on that front wall including a freshman guard but the anchor is Danny McGrath the center Brandon Orr over 170 yards last week Royal and Harper will be a big big part Bob talked about the wide receivers especially with Josh Morgan out due to the suspension second down and four Georgia Tech jumps in there looked like Daryl Richard got an early start and that might just give the Hokies the a first down without Contact. having to try it defense number 95 five yard penalty the penalty will result and a first down. So they get a first down by penalty as we take a look at the city defense for Georgia Tech. The guy that causes all kinds of havoc in there is Joe Anawaii. Even though he doesn't have big statistics, Philip Wheeler is the top tackler. Kenny Scott's a preseason all ACC choice back there in the secondary. First down for the Hokies from their own 39 yard line. Tech showing blitz. Glennon stands up, has a look, and looks to his wideouts yeah. and the sideline. 80% of the time, Georgia Tech is bringing somebody. Here's Orr, left side. And he got about four. Daryl Richard, who jumped in the neutral zone, is a guy that made the stop defensively for Georgia Tech. Brandon, a great game last week. I mentioned 170 yards. 152 of those came in the second half. A career high for him last week. Third down at three on their opening offensive march. They already trail by a touchdown. Play action, plenty of time, and now Glennon running out of time. Flush from the pocket. And now he's going to try to cut it upfield, and I don't know if he got there. He stretches out. But it looks like they've marked him short of the first down. K. Michael Hall, the linebacker, out there to make the stop. They backed the ball up and just about put it right on the yellow line. But from the far side, when they walked it off, you can see now where they've spotted it. About a yard short. Georgia Tech in the country, in the top 20 in just about everything, and first in pass efficiency in the ACC. John Tenuta is the defensive coordinator and uh, he is like I said one of the best in the country. They bring out Nick Schmidt the biggest punter in the country. 6 2 276. He stands at his own 35. Brad I'm watching him from the backside here and I'll tell you he's wide. <laughs> he goes from hash mark to hash mark. Oh, not a good kick way off the side of his foot. It went in almost to the first row of the seats. And let's see where they walk it up. And as much as they work on special teams, Coach Beamer's not going to be happy with that punt. All the way back to about the 37, 38 yard line. A 14 yard punt. They're not happy with that. They're not happy being down by seven either. That's Torgerson Bridge connected to Torgerson Hall, home of Advanced Communications and Information Technology Center. It's going to be one of the spiffiest places on the whole campus when it's all done. I don't think I'm sophisticated enough to hang out there probably, although we are in the communication business. First down, Georgia Tech. It's on 38 Reggie ball going deep down the left sideline James Johnson again and he almost got it to him Johnson who had the big play on the opening snap for Georgia Tech and he almost had another one. We take a look at our IBM star watch Nolan Burchett but Foster says he's my anchor in there. He's the leader although he's a quiet guy Aaron Rouse is not he's a safety. He'll take your head off you give him a chance 6 4 227. He's the lunch pail holder to practice in games every day and that means a lot around these parts. The defense is ranked seventh in the nation. 
in total defense, and they are really good. Yeah, they can score going the other way, as Georgia Tech found out last year. But Tech's already got a better start going than they had the entire game last season. Ball on a run again. Reggie got out across the 45 to the 46 yard line. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Should bring up third down and one. Xavier Adibi and Barry Booker make the stop. Reggie Ball. Guys running by design a lot more this year with Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, calling the plays. Well, Patrick Nix is doing a nice job so far in this ball game. I'm impressed. First play of the ball game, the long pass. First play of this drive, the second drive of the game. Another pass down the sideline. There's Patrick right in the middle. There you go, Grease. Former Auburn quarterback. Now the crowd trying to come to life because Georgia Tech's got a third and one. They're about 35 percent on the year in their third down conversions. Reggie Ball play action to choice jump pass got it to Calvin Johnson Johnson inside the 40. He might be gone Johnson 20 down the sideline. They're not going to get him. touchdown Georgia Tech second of the day for number 21 53 yards on the pass play. He said in the opening that Reggie Ball and Calvin Johnson, those two guys, had to make some things happen. They're doing that on the first two drives. Paul, you got a great look right here. Oh, I'll tell you what. What they did is they all went to Dunlap, number 88. And why, I don't know, because Calvin Johnson was wide open. When you start trailing him, you have no chance of catching him or breaking the pass up. But why they both defensive backs went to Dunlap, I do not know. Travis Bell point after is up and good a shocked lane stadium with 754 remaining already the All-American we talked about has got two touchdown catches on the day 14 to nothing the Ramblin' Rack in front Bob I don't know if he took this from Billy Kilmer or Joe Cap. well watch right here Brendan Hill right here jumps and that now he waits till he comes down and then he jumps to throw it over I mean you can't teach that stuff Reggie Ball's been doing this for four years at Georgia Tech. You can't coach that. Bobby, that's good stuff. And there's the <laughs> battery right there. Johnson from Ball. Boy, the smiles on the Yellow Jacket sideline. We got a long way to go, but there were no smiles last year in this place. And they know it's not over by any stretch of the imagination. Muhammad Yayawi to kick to Eddie Royal and David Clowney. And this one's deeper, and Clowney just watches it sail over his head. So now Virginia Tech down two touchdowns as they take over on offense. Third down at 12. Here comes a blitz. Lennon stands in. Deep sideline. Royals go. Oh, he dropped it. Eddie Royal had it and dropped it. Uh, he had Kenny Scott just turned around. Kenny Scott had no idea, number two, where Royal was going. The pass was perfect. Everything was perfect except the catch. And Royal just dropped the ball. Well, he was looking back into the sun. You look at the shade. The, the shadows, all the shadows are going that way, so he was looking right back into the sun. So Nick Schmidt, who had a terrible punt the first time, he's a preseason All-American candidate. He'll get set to kick to Andrew Smith for Georgia Tech, and Tech should get, uh, for Georgia Tech, I should say, and they block it. It's not Beamer ball, it's Yellow Jacket ball at the 25-yard line. Troy Garside, I think, is the guy that got the block punt. And boy, what a turn of events here in the early going. Come look, Go ahead, Paul. Look from the outside, the left-hand side. This is where they come from. They, and, and I cannot believe that you can make it, make it that fast. That shows you how slow, to me, the punter is. Now look it. You're just a push on the outside guy, but you've got to be able to get this ball off. That's a punter's fault. Gar side on the far side. Georgia Tech on the plus side at the 25. You never know. Patrick Nix might pull a plug right here and say, let's go get another one. Oh, you, you. Play action. Reggie Ball. Down the middle. Deep. Rashawn Grant. Oh, and a nice hit in the end zone, or it would have been a touchdown. D.J. Parker saved a touchdown. They went for it all to Rashawn Grant. That's a great call. Patrick Nix, Chan Gailey, got his troops playing on all, all cylinders, offense, defense, special teams. Here he is right down the middle. What a hit. Perfectly timed. Bang. Well, I tell you, Parker never looked at the player. All he looked at was the ball. When he saw the ball in the air, then he looked at the player and nailed it. 
Both Johnsons to the left side. Grant trots out now to the bottom of your screen on second and ten. Reggie Ball designed run right side inside the 20. First down. First and goal. Ramblin' wreck. This is what Reggie Ball has done so well all year long. A couple of weeks ago against Troy, he set a quarterback record at Georgia Tech with 130 yards on the ground, and he's doing the same thing right now. Hey, I'm impressed. This is this is the best of Reggie Ball. I'm sure the fans that have seen a lot of these games have seen Reggie be inconsistent. But when you want to know the best, you're seeing it the best here today of Reggie Ball. And Chan Gailey bringing his troops in to a hostile environment. Takes the first two drives and scores and then blocks a punt. Says, in your face, Frank Beamer. This might be the best 10 minutes Georgia Tech's ever played. 14 to nothing, trying to go for more. First and goal. Ball, quarterback draw. This time he swallowed up as he got near the five yard line. Pickup of about two. 66,000 are in total shock in Blacksburg, and it's going to get worse unless they find a way to stop Georgia Tech offensively right here. Second down and goal at the five yard line. There's Johnson. That's Calvin Johnson. James is to the top of your screen. Toss to Shard Choice. Straight up the middle. Touchdown. Five yard run. It is 20 to nothing, Georgia Tech. You know what's amazing about this play is they run straight up the middle against Virginia Tech and they split out both Johnsons and, they, and Virginia Tech only put two defenders out there one on each guy so they were man to man they had all nine guys inside and Georgia Tech just shoved it right in their face. 25 yard drive in just four plays remember it was the block punt by Garside that started it all. Travis Bell point after is good. And with four minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter, 21 to nothing, this one on the ground. You just take a look at it. You're looking right into the pit, right into the heart of the defense, and they just went right up in the middle and blocked. Mike Cox, the fullback, gets an outstanding block, and there's a touchdown. And Clowney is collared and ripped down at about the 20-yard line by Tony Clark. So Virginia Tech goes on offense now. So now a worried Frank Beamer, I'm sure. A team that's averaging about 35 points a game, and they're going to need to put some up pretty soon just to get back in this thing in the first quarter. They have seven plays and only 13 yards of offense. They fake the end around and give it to Brandon Orr, who got about three yards. K. Michael Hall made the tackle. Bonnie? Brad, you saw Clowney on the return. He's coming off the appendectomy. When I talked to him this week, he said he really hasn't felt much in the way of after effects. He skipped a couple periods on Monday, but by Wednesday was almost back at 100% full speed. He said he used Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger as inspiration. He had an appendectomy and came back after 11. He said, I want to beat him by two days with nine. Boy, that's tough. <laughs> that's gutsy. He wanted to be a headhunter on the punt team, too, so he's a tough wide receiver. Second down and seven. Lennon in trouble again. K. Michael Hall has got him all wrapped up in Saxon at the 10 yard line. A loss of 13. K. Michael Hall is an, an, a linebacker blitzing from the outside. One thing Glennon does not have are the quicks that the quarterbacks before, the two Vicks and Brian uh, Randall. Randall, right here from the right side. Well, but when he turns, Glennon, the first thing he sees is K. Michael Hall. Number 35, and he said, I got to get out of here. Good. And now it's third down and 20. Glad it will work from the shotgun. Even the bad plays are down here. <laughs> Tech will bring the blitz again. Went in near his own end zone. Going to go deep near sideline. Got a man. And who's going to get it? Run down. We took it. By Harper. Justin Harper. And Virginia Tech finally gets away from McGuire and on the other end of the field. <laughs> yeah, but the corner's about to change. They're going to be back down here, pal. Yeah, he were Daniels. Looked like he was going to have the play. It was a jump ball, and Harper at 6'4", Jahi Daniels at about six foot, and he just ripped it right out before he hit the turf. It's Great play. Call. That's a big play. Harper makes the first big play for the Hokies here today. Here Georgia Tech, everybody lines up yeah, there. Yeah. They had seven guys close. Glennon backed out wisely. And they give it off to Brandon Orr. Orr got down for about four to the 26. Philip Wheeler 
The middle linebacker, number 41 for Georgia Tech, made the stop. One more play, boys, and you'll be back down in my end. <laughs> The big thing for the, the young sophomore, Sean Glennon, to remember is don't, don't force anything. Don't rush anything. Sure, you're 21 points down, but just get one score. I mean, you don't make any mistakes. All you can do is take it down and get one, and then the next time, you get another one. Eighth play of the drive, second down and six. Orr found a hole off the right side. He's got something working. Brandon Orr inside the 10. He might get there. Touchdown. This is Brandon Orr. You watch his feet, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this man move. The cuts that he's going to make once he gets in the hole. It looks like he's tackled right here, but not. He makes that step. He goes back to the outside, and he's gone. Jamal Lewis couldn't quite track him down. Brandon Pace with the extra point. And now, finally, they have something to cheer about in Lane Stadium with 20 seconds remaining in the quarter. Brandon Orr goes in for his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. This one from 26 yards out, and he'll come right at you on the cutback on this one. This is a huge drive and a big score for Virginia Tech. We knew they were going to score. We knew they had some speed. Orr was having an outstanding year, and that is just a huge score for the psyche. As Chris Dunlap will await the kick from Jared Develli. Reggie Ball, two touchdown passes to Calvin Johnson so far to Shard Choice with a five-yard touchdown run with a rambling wreck from Atlanta. And now Virginia Tech right back in it, and so is their crowd, more importantly. This place was rocking in the early going until Reggie Ball threw a long pass to James Johnson on the first play of the game. Michael Matthews, a tight end, one of the up guys on the kick return, will take it to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. Well, Virginia Tech's going to have to try to rally from behind, that's for sure. So far, though, Georgia Tech controlled on the road in the first quarter. It was all Hokies out of the tunnel. Then it was all Yellow Jackets with Calvin Johnson and Tashar Choice. 21-7, Georgia Tech. Reggie Ball in the shotgun with five wideouts. Ball flushed from the pocket. Throws on the run. It's intercepted. Down the sideline. Brendan Hill. That time Reggie couldn't get it over the hill. He did the first time. That time the linebacker got him and went 27 yards the other way. During the return. Illegal block in the back. Number 99 of the defense. 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. Watch this. Watch, watch here. When ball goes back to throw, now they, they're watching the defense. Take a look at the defense. Don't look at ball. Look at all the red shirts behind him. They got an open man. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six red shirts. And then Hope makes the interception. That's a ball that should yeah. not have been thrown. Sometimes you just Hill, try me. to do too much. Brandon Orr up the middle. Diving forward to the 23, maybe the 22-yard line. Daryl Richard. And Philip Wheeler make the stop. So Virginia Tech got the big turnover that they needed. The mistake by Reggie Ball. He's talking about it with Patrick Nix, you can bet, right now. And it was Brendan Hall who he did the jump pass over to get Calvin Johnson's touchdown. That time he didn't get it enough over him. Uh, coming into this ball game, Reggie Ball had had four interceptions against Virginia Tech, and the last three of them were returned for touchdowns. Yeah, that's an amazing stat, and that was almost number four right there. And with the illegal block, the field position not quite as good as it would have been. Brandon Orr again to the 21 where it's going to be third down and about three here at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg 66,000 plus hoping now that Brandon Hills interception can turn into points and close the gap on the visiting Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech with eight minutes and ten seconds remaining in the half third down and three shortest third down attempt by Virginia Tech so far today and they'll do it on the ground and they might get it right on the mark. Philip Wheeler made the tackle. Let's see if they'll have to take a look at this one. 
Brandon Pace hit three field goals against Georgia Tech last year, including a 40 yarder. That's where this one comes from, and he's got it right down Main Street, Blacksburg. So they wanted seven, but they got three. And 10 unanswered points for Virginia Tech's got them back in the thick of things with seven minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the half. 21 to 10, Georgia Tech. Both coaches happy. One happy that he got at least three. The other one happy that his defense held and didn't give up seven. Brendan Hill's the guy that started it with the intercepted ball. That's what led to the three points by pace. So just four yards and four plays on that last drive before having to kick the field goal after the false start penalty stunted their drive. Jared Develli will tee it up. And Chris Dunlap waiting down on the goal line for Georgia Tech. Shadows now covering about two thirds of the field here. Worsham Field at Lane Stadium. Kick is deep. Dunlap seven yards in will take a knee. So Georgia Tech will work from its own 20 yard line. The eighth. There's Calvin up in the circle. Reggie Ball made a mistake with his last pass. Let's see if he rebounds right here. And he's going to go deep for Calvin Johnson. Jump ball picked off again. Victor Harris with the interception. Back to back interceptions by Reggie Ball. That's not Reggie's fault. Calvin Johnson's right there. He's got to break that up. Top of your screen just going to go straight down the field. Probably can't see the ball. He's looking up. Yeah, he's looking like he did. He's, you got to, you got to go up and and take care of your quarterback. He was told to throw the ball up down the field to your six-five receiver, and your six-five receiver's got to help you out and, and and not let the defensive back intercept it. So. Calvin Johnson will have a seat. Reggie Ball will have a chat upstairs again. And Virginia Tech, right back in the hunt at the seven-minute mark with the ball back. Lennon throws it out complete screen to Clowney Clowney to the middle of the field flags are down on the far side and the flags came in kind of a straight place a, a strange place I think this is all coming back it would have been a first down and a pickup of 13 there is no foul the ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage I think what they were thinking about was maybe a legal man downfield but well, it was a screen pass behind the line the of scrimmage. The ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage and in college football you can block downfield whether you're a lineman or a receiver you can block downfield if the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I wonder how many people in Atlanta or anywhere in the country that watched the game two years ago between these two teams when it looked like Georgia Tech had the game all sewed up and all of a sudden the fourth quarter blew up on them and Virginia Tech came back to win. Things are slipping that way. Yes. Momentum is changing jerseys. It is. Here's a wide open receiver and a first down down at the 26 yard line to Josh Hyman. Last year Georgia Tech had a field goal blocked and that was a 78 yard return. That's when the wheels fell off a year ago. <laughs> Almost offside on the blitz third and goal. Lenny throws oh, up and no. another drop ball by Greg Boone. Well, Greg is trying to get that tight end position down. I mentioned he's a huge former quarterback. He dropped two of the three drop balls they've had today. Last year's uh, tight end graduated, and they've got three freshmen at that position Boone, Wheeler, and Wang. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Pace. But none of those lawyers can catch. That's right. <laughs> and neither can Greg so far. 25 yard field goal attempt by Brandon Pace. He hit one earlier and just tucked it in the right up right there. So both interceptions have turned into only six points for Virginia Tech, and it could have been a lot worse for Georgia Tech. 21 13. 429 remaining. <laughs> Here's the upcoming kick with four and a half minutes remaining in the half. And again, it's deep. Dunlap thought about it, takes a knee. Third down and seven. Ball, deep sideline of Johnson. He's got it at the 50 and down to the 43 yard line. That is just a great throw. Just a great throw. As good as those interceptions were bad throws, this was just outstanding. Here he is in the slot. He's just going to go around and run to the outside. 
No help over there. It was a linebacker that was trying to get back Vince Hall to try to help out. Looking back into the sun. You know what Swana used to tell us if you can't see the ball catch the sun. Yeah that's what he's, uh, for sure. Comes out to the left side this time does Johnson first down Georgia Tech now they've got an opportunity for more points before halftime because of the change in field position design quarterback run again and this one loses a yard or two Georgia Tech that first down on the throw out to Calvin Johnson was the first first down since there was five minutes left in the first quarter so they did it with big plays and now they're down to two minutes remaining Calvin Johnson you think he's not a big contributor to the offense of Georgia Tech Wow yeah all the touchdowns. 36 touchdowns. He's caught 18 of them in that offense career wise. What I don't understand is how Virginia Tech allows him to leave the line of scrimmage with nobody touching him. They let him run free. Second down, 13 to Shard Choice. Had a little crease. Now the cutback run by Choice broke a tackle. Looking for Reggie Ball to throw him a block. He's got a first down, and he's inside the 20 yard line. Boy, and as we saw Brandon Orr do earlier, the cutback run, this time to Shard Choice. And he's got a first down for Georgia Tech. 28 yard run. Well, here's Choice, at, you know, number 22. Watch what he does now. It looked like Orr's run, almost identically the same. Look at that. He gets hit at the, near the line of scrimmage, then comes back out to the outer, other side. He goes right into all the pursuit and outruns it. First and goal. Waiting for the umpire to back out. And downs it wow. to stop the clock with 16 seconds remaining. Save your timeout. That way you can either run or throw on the next down or two. Chan Gailey looking on. He's a coach that's seen some big upset wins against top 15 teams over his career. And then he's also seen some games that Georgia Tech was supposed to win and didn't. That's kind of been the way Chan's seasons have gone, although they keep going to bowl games. Last year they were seven and five. Right now they're looking to go to four and one. It would be huge if they could win on the road. Second down and goal at the four. There's Calvin Johnson. Not just circling. The toss out to Shard Choice, and he is met head on and lost yardage. Timeout. Vince Hall. Timeout should be coming here, and there Coach Gailey comes over to take it. So it's going to bring up ten seconds remaining. There's a play I just don't, I don't understand the play if, if you're you're down to what, 16 seconds you know you have one time out and everybody you've got the best receiver in the country sitting out there if you're not going to throw it to him at least use him as a decoy and throw it someplace else. Well wait a minute guys you can't you can't say that Patrick Nix is doing a good job calling plays and then nitpick about one play that you don't like. He obviously called that play because inside the 20 and inside the 10 Virginia Tech had shown some tendencies defensively that made that play look good to him. Keep in mind now it's still only third down. They got 10 seconds left. You want to throw a fade right. throw a fade this then you bring out your field goal unit. Yeah I think everybody in the stadium knows that this is going to be a fade to uh, Calvin Johnson. Well, <laughs> it's third and goal at the six. Now they're going to put Calvin Johnson in the slot. Will they move him or will they run him from that spot. Bob you can circle him. There he is. That's Calvin Johnson third and goal. Reggie Ball lobs it. He lobbed it too far. Well, it was going to number 21, but he tried to throw a spot pass right about between the goalposts, and that's not where Calvin Johnson was. So here comes the field goal unit. Johnson kind of ran a little slant. Yeah, he, they're on the wrong page because he's running a little bit of a slant. Now, see, the, 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 the ball went over the other shoulder, the wrong, the other now way. Now, the tendency there is if, if the guy's up on the bump, I'm going to run a fade up the field. But if he's off, which he was, I'm running a slant, which he did run. Travis Bell will try a 22-yard field goal. He had one blocked here last year. He's had a pretty good season after an up-and-down campaign last year. And the kick is up and good. So Georgia Tech tacks on three more. Both teams now have had a first and goal situation and had to settle for field goals. And Georgia Tech appears to be a team that's going to have an 11 point halftime lead. <laughs> halftime in Blacksburg. And it's Georgia Tech with a little bit of a surprise going on. They lead at the break 24 13. Yayawi to kick. And Eddie Royal and David Clowney await as the Hokies will have the ball first to start the third quarter. 
this one deep. And they'll take a knee. So Virginia Tech will start from the 20 yard line. You know Greece we had so much room up here and it was so peaceful <laughs> when McGuire was down in the end zone. But we welcome Paul back to the booth. Did you have fun on there? I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I had fun. That, I mean, it, I, you know how great that is, that end zone. Yeah, but the other sure. end zone, I think, is just as good. Maybe you want to try that. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys in a little while. I'll be right back. <laughs> well, Virginia Tech stayed in the ball game. Two interceptions, two big plays on third down and long to Harper, and that's how they're still in the ball game. Exactly. I was really impressed with Georgia Tech coming into the ball game. Scored on their first three possessions. And they really came out on offense and let it go. Sean Glennon to throw on first down to Eddie Royal. Royal's got a first down. He's got some room to run. He's got great speed, and he's out to midfield. Boy, that's the way you start the third quarter if you're Virginia Tech. Not surprising to see Virginia Tech coming out and throwing at the uh, corner on that side where uh, Pat Clark is. Pat Clark in for Word J. Daniels. J. Word Daniels, uh -huh. who's had a tough game. Well, he, had, he was hurt, too. He had to... He had a foot injury going right to work over there on that side and going with a no huddle at midfield second snap of the quarter and this time Orr is going to be dragged down for a loss of almost three Adam Oliver made the stop take a look at our Pacific Life game summary statistically in the half Georgia Tech with the 11 point lead the big advantage in total yardage and Virginia Tech actually had the ball longer than Georgia Tech. But Georgia Tech had those big plays. Remember, they had a 58 yarder on the first snap from center to James Johnson. Then they capped an 80 yard drive in just five plays. Didn't take them long. They blocked a punt. Virginia Tech has not. And that's where we are right now. Virginia Tech very much in the thick of it, though, with the possession here to open the third. Lennon trying to throw out incomplete. Josh Hyman low and away. They it's had third down and long. Hey, Brad, they had something going on. There was a wide receiver screen. If he could have just got him the ball. Two linemen were out there in front of him with blocks. So third down and 12. And the young quarterback looking to the sideline and hoping he can convert here and keep the drive alive. There's Jahi Word Daniels. He'll trot out to meet Eddie Royal and Josh Hyman. And the big receiver, Justin Harper, down to the bottom of your screen. Kenny Scott is on him. That's where they're looking, and he's hit from behind, and there's a fumble. Georgia Tech scoops it up. Down the sideline is Gary Guyton with a convoy. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Philip Wheeler, who's been in the backfield all day, hits Glennon, and Guyton scoops it up and goes 39 yards for the touchdown. Nobody touched Philip Wheeler. Nobody. He came off the corner, and not a soul even brushed him. We mentioned John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, blitzing five guys in almost 80, 90 percent of the time. You don't draw it up any better than this defensively. And, and when you come from the blind side, more often than not, the ball's coming out. Defensive score. And Guyton down the sideline, officially 38 yards for the touchdown. Travis Bell for the point after. And much like the opening minute of the first quarter, the opening minute of the third quarter is a shocker for the Virginia Tech fans. Wheeler with the hit. Out comes the ball. Guyton takes it for the touchdown. It is 31 to 13, Georgia Tech. Beamer ball back at Beamer. Gary Guyton just went 38 yards with a fumble recovery for a Georgia Tech touchdown. Uh, they hit by Philip Wheeler on the Virginia Tech quarterback, Sean Glennon, from behind. So number 41, who moved to the middle linebacker spot this year from the outside. And we've been talking about him all day long. Even when he's not making a tackle, he seems to be around the football. That time he separated football from quarterback, and Georgia Tech leads 31 to 13. Here's a kick. And this one will go out of bounds, much like the one to end the first half, and they'll move it out to the 35-yard line. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, when I talked to Chan Gala, he talked about the importance of being aggressive and how that will allow Georgia Tech to get the momentum early in the game, the blocked punt, the aggressive passing downfield. He said the reason why the deep passing game was working so well was because Virginia Tech wanted to stop our run. They played a lot of too deep, and that gave us creases. Interesting to see when Georgia Tech gets the ball back, if Bud Foster will make some adjustments. The Hokies the entire season so far have only allowed 10 second half points. Up the middle is Orr and only to about the five. Daryl Richard made the stop defensively. 
Just under five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. And Georgia Tech on the road here in front of a hostile crowd. This place was completely rocking at the beginning of the game. But Georgia Tech went 80 yards in five plays. First snap of the game. Reggie Ball hooked up with James Johnson on a long pass play. That quieted people. Then he threw the fade in the corner to Calvin Johnson to cap the march. The touchdown. And now Georgia Tech's defense has taken over in the second half. Led by Gary Guyton's fumble return of 38 yards. And that's where we stand. 31 to 13. Sean Glennon now in the shotgun from his own end zone. Going to throw deep down the left sideline. And it's broken up over there. Nice play on the ball by Jamal Lewis defensively for Georgia Tech. So the second straight punt coming up out of the Virginia Tech end zone. On that play there, it's the first time I've seen Virginia Tech do it. They pulled the lineman out to block a linebacker. <laughs> they said, we're not going to wait on the back yep. blocking him anymore. We're going to give you some help. Nick Schmidt again backed up near his own end line. There he is, a big 276-pound putter. 276, did you say? Yeah. Lose about 80 to be able to kick it further. <laughs> this one, nice high spiral, hangs up there. Andrew Smith takes it at the 48. Smith trying to reverse his field. If he picks up a blocker, he might have something working. He's still got a nice return to about the 37-yard line. Here, Georgia Tech with a lead. And to Shard Choi straight up the middle. Big opening that time. Nice blocking by Tuminello and McManus and company. And he knocked through there for about nine yards. Vince Hall made the stop. It's interesting, the momentum of this game. The game started the first half. Georgia Tech came out. They had the momentum the entire first quarter. And then it's kind of shifted over to Virginia Tech. Coming out the second half, it's the Georgia Tech defense that set the momentum. And now Georgia Tech has had the momentum. Their field position and all their possessions has been in Georgia, in, in Virginia Tech territory. Three straight times. Toss to choice to Shard up the middle. Nice run down inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. Reggie Ball, quick throw to James Johnson, the other way. And to about the 10-yard line, where it's going to be third down. They need to get to about the three for a first down. And what the Hokies need, the Hokies need what the Yellow Jackets got, something from their defense. Yep. Knock the ball loose from the quarterback. They need a non-offensive score similar to what Georgia Tech did to them. It's almost a carbon copy of a year ago, only it's the other way around. Yes. It's a nickname series for Greece. <laughs> Hokies, the Yellow Hokies Jackets. And the Jackets. Yep. Hey, I like it. Hokey Jackets. It's been hard not to just say Tech all day long for either <laughs> one of these teams, trust yeah. me. This is Georgia Tech with a third and seven at the 10. Choice spot an opening. Dropped the ball and then scooped it for a touchdown. Tashard Choice lost it at about the one as he was dragging a would be tackler. And he took it on the hop and he scored for the second time today. And the third run that they've had up the middle. I mean, in between the tackles. And it's, it's the shortest distance. Watch these guys. All you have to do is block the one guy at the point of attack, and then you're in the open. What a perfect hop. That's yeah. the kind of way that's been going for Georgia Tech today. It's your day when the ball bounces right up to you at the goal line. So it's a sharp choice. That was his drive almost exclusively. Travis Bell for the point after. And the kick is up. And it's good. And now Virginia Tech is finding out what they're made of or they're going to find out because they are trailing 38 to 13. 36 yard drive in five plays. Remember last season against Georgia Tech it was Virginia Tech with three non offensive touchdowns. We showed you the blocked field goal earlier. We showed you the interception return by Chris Ellis and there was an interception return also by uh, Adibi. Now today, Georgia Tech's done almost the same thing. They blocked a punt. They ran a fumble back for a touchdown. So they've got it. They've got Beamer ball working in reverse, as Bob said earlier. In your face. Yep. Special teams have been dominating. The punter has been outstanding. He really has. And here's the kickoff. This one's returnable from a yard deep. Out across the 20, Clowney. Maybe got to the 24. That's about it. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. And 
Virginia Tech starts the fourth quarter with a first down at the Georgia Tech 43 yard line but they trail by 25 points. Sean Glennon's had a tough day against a tough Georgia Tech defense looking to throw here rolling and now tries to get what he can and gets to about the 40 yard line will bring up second down and long. Welcome back everybody Brad Nessler Bob Greasy Paul McGuire Bonnie Bernstein on the sideline it would take the comeback of the Beamer era for them to not avoid an upset here at home. Do they have it in them? Uh, you know, this is a surprise. You know, I thought it would be a close game. I thought the Virginia Tech would be tough to score on, and they haven't been. I, I'm impressed with the Georgia Tech's offense. I'm, I'm impressed with Georgia Tech's defense. And defense. Along with it. Yeah. But I think that if, if Virginia Tech, they don't score a touchdown on this drive, it's all over. Well, fourth quarter's got a lot to go. They get it out and they complete it to Sam Wheeler, the tight end, on a little wheel route, if you will. And Sean Glennon's got to pick himself up again. And Calvin Johnson on the sideline trying to keep that injured thigh warm as he rides the bike with a big smile. Two touchdowns for him in the first quarter of this game when Georgia Tech put 21 on the board. And again, Virginia Tech only gave up 27 points in a first quarter all of last year. And they gave up three touchdowns to Georgia Tech in this ball game. Third down in the yard. And it's going to be a first down run for Lewis. K. Michael Hall makes the stop. Virginia Tech keeps its drive alive. And we. That's pretty good, Jamarcus. I think that's a perfect quarterback rating. And you only miss two and you throw three touchdowns. I tell you what, out to David Clowney. When you talk about solid at, and deep at quarterback situations, LSU. Yeah. LSU. <laughs> oh, yeah. They got that young kid, Paralu. Paralu. And we saw Matt uh, Flynn. Flynn in the Peach Bowl last year. Oh, boy. They, they're, yeah, they're thick there. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Very nice. Virginia Tech, this young guy. Doing what he can, the sophomore out of Centerville, Virginia. Big kid, 6'4, 221. Back to throw again. And this one's batted in the air at the line of scrimmage. Daryl Richard, the big guy they call the doctor because it's DR for his initials. So John Tenuta calls him the doctor or the professor because he's been on the academic all ACC honor roll every quarter that he's been at Georgia Tech. And that's a defensive lineman. Yep. He just <laughs> made a house call. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> Third down. Normally you think of defensive linemen. They ain't going to be right up there in your academic uh, profiles. Oh, really? Yeah. And the quarterbacks would be, I suppose. Well, that's uh, well, generally speaking. I didn't say that. No. But <laughs> I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> Here comes Lewis. He's got a first down. He's inside the Georgia Tech 20 and down to the 16 yard line. Like Paul said, Virginia Tech gets a touchdown here. There's still a lot of time left in the ballgame. But they need a touchdown. They, they just cannot settle for a field goal. And I think that man knows it. And they're going without a huddle or trying to. And that's a very difficult thing to do with a young quarterback, too. Well, you know, you're talking about young quarterbacks and all the quarterbacks at LSU. There's this, this kid right here, Glennon. He's a sophomore. He's going to be a pretty good one. Yep. Please reset the game clock to 12:43. One, two, four, three. If you're just joining us. Tom McCreasy, our referee, was not counting out of order. One, two, four, three. He didn't mean one, two, three, four. He was just trying to get some extra seconds back on the clock. Glennon wide open. Nice spin move by Hyman. Hyman inside the ten, diving down. First and goal at about the two-yard line. Boy, nice move he put on in the open field to get about 10 extra yards. And now Virginia Tech is knocking on the Georgia Tech door. Brad, I'll tell you what. You talk about great concentration in, in hands. Hyman, it knows he's going to get whacked. And he catches this ball, and then he's got to move right now. Watch it. Catch move. That's around Kenny Scott. Boy, is that great coordination and, you know, eye contact with the ball. That's what I'm talking about. The receivers for the Hokies, they have a bunch of them. Play action. Oh, and he overshot an open tight end, Sam Wheeler. Too much on that one. And Sean's going, oof, I'd have pulled the string a little bit. I'd have had him. Exactly right. He just needed to have a little touch on that ball. He didn't have to throw it quickly or hard, just a little touch. And that was the thing. He rushed it just a little bit. 15th play of this drive. Second down and goal. There's Sean's numbers on the day. And they're not that bad, but he's been hit and fumbled a couple of times. Now it's Lewis. Straight up the middle meets Wheeler. And he's going to be short of the end zone. Wheeler and Aniabi are there defensively. So it is third down and goal. This is two down territory. We know that. So you got a couple of plays. Chan Gailey's well aware of that for his defensive front. 
Lewis, number 38, is five feet eight, 200 and. 38 uh, pounds. Yeah, I think he's a little more than that. Maybe. I think he had a big breakfast. Depends on what he had this morning. <laughs> he's the tailback behind Carlton Weatherford. And here he comes. And there he goes. He's they don't signal touchdown. To I don't. Th now yeah, they, they give did. it to him. Touchdown. A late call from the far side. And Elon Lewis is in the end zone for Virginia Tech. Have you noticed how good these guys get along the replay from officials and the outfield <laughs> officials. So it's call it a one yard touchdown. <laughs> At least I don't agree with you two all the time. The thing I like is that they don't take long to do it. That's true. It's a touchdown 38 to 20. So the lead has been cut to 18. 76 yard march in 622 Virginia Tech still got life at home. Frank Beamer's Hokies are down 38 to 20 to the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech with 1140 to go. Guys is it uh, is there always a line where it's too early to try an onside kick Georgia Tech certainly isn't expecting one. I mean it's a three it's a three score game for Virginia Tech to get back in the ballgame. Now they'll handle it. Chris Dunlap from the goal line. Dunlap. At about the 22 got planted by Cam Martin. Virginia Tech their last eight drives in this ball game, including since halftime. There's the halftime cutoff. Nice job Bob. That's a really hey, straight line they drew. Fumble there, fumble punt punt and finally a touchdown. Yeah and look at this. 16 plays it took yeah, and it took them six and a half minutes yeah. almost the next drives uh, the next time they get the ball they cannot take that much time Calvin Johnson has not Grace caught a pass in his second half and he was five for 100 yards and two touchdowns in the first as long as their defense keeps scoring they don't need Calvin they need to shard choice and here he comes and he's had a heck of a game out of bounds at about the 27 yard line a pickup of five most of the ground game was done by Reggie Ball on quarterback draws and quarterback keepers four minutes so far in this drive time is of the essence Virginia Tech needs to make a play on defense they got eight guys nine guys oh, up the line of scrimmage gonna throw and Calvin Johnson's got the catch on a perfect toss on third and a yard they run the slant and Reggie Ball just drills it to number 21 this is perfect timing they got ten guys at the line of scrimmage. Big Calvin, 6'5, 235 pounds, gets inside of the smaller uh, cornerback, Harris, and just makes the play. You see how he blocked him out with his body and then, then just extended his arms? There's no chance for Harris. This is this is this is good stuff by an offensive team holding the ball when you need to hold it. You don't need to score, you need to make first downs. I'm impressed with uh, Chan Gailey and his group. Georgia what, Tech. They came in here and did a nice job, and they're doing very impressive. They're seven minutes away from by far their biggest win of the year. Brooks, remember, dropped his last two punts inside the five, and he got rid of this one again. And this one is going to go into the end zone, but he did his job. He knew they were coming, yep. and he did the quick two step. Got it out of there. So Calvin, Calvin and Tashard and uh, the rest of the Georgia Tech offense having reason to smile. Remember they got throttled up here last year 51 to 7 when the wheels came off early and it's almost the exact opposite here today. It's been a well rounded uh, Georgia Tech team. Offense has done it. Defense has done it. Special teams has really played better than the Hokies. And no huddle here. For Sean Glennon. They need points and they need them fast. Georgia Tech still bringing the heat. Pass complete. Looks like it's going to be a first down out at about the 32 yard line to Josh Hyman. Time running out. See, that clock doesn't start until that umpire gets out of there. And that, you know, just as soon as he steps out, bang, like that, snap the ball. Here comes Wheeler again. Glennon got rid of it and in and out of the hands of David Clowney. Let's get another update. Nope, we're going to keep it right here. Reminder, though, for you, time permitting, 
You can stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Report featuring scores and highlights. John and Craig and Doug will be in New York. Bring you up to date on everything that happened around the country today. Rice a winner over Army as you look at some of the scores being posted on the screen. And second down at 10. Here comes the pressure. K. Michael Hall with a hit. And they're going to say it was an incomplete pass this time. But Hall, who forced a fumble earlier, almost had another one. I want to say a shout out to uh, all our troops overseas and especially uh, a big Virginia Tech fan who's in Ramadi, Iraq, Corporal Ryan Brinkmeyer of the Marine Corps over there. Ryan, we ran into your dad the other night. He wanted to tell you he loves you and hey, I'm sure your team's not playing <laughs> yeah, better today. We're sorry. Sorry we're bringing you this news about Virginia Tech. But uh... Glennon going deep and it is caught. Almost intercepted and caught for a first down out at the 48 yard line. David Clowney just took that away from Jamal Lewis. I thought it was going to be picked off. You talk about some great concentration. Clowney that ball goes through. And he kept his eye on the ball the entire way and makes the catch. And don't forget he knew he was going to take a hit. He's the guy that had the appendectomy nine days ago. You get up midair going across the middle you're going to get tagged. Glennon throwing wide side now completes it to Clowney again. He stiff arms Jamal Lewis and steps out of bounds about a yard short of the first down. Georgia Tech defensively just playing loose playing a deep zone not letting anybody get behind him force him to use time to move down the field. But the pressure came earlier in the ball game and it's been pressure all day and John Tenuta's defense and he admits to us about 80 percent of the time I got five guys coming so they blitz on almost every down. They're coming with an extra guy here. Pump fake now going deep in the middle and yeah, incomplete interference. either pass interference or holding in the Georgia Tech secondary. Josh Hyman was down there in the middle of the field. Josh Hyman couldn't get away. I think DJ Jones had him like tangled up wasn't it. Yeah. It is holding not pass interference. I thought he had him all pretty much collared. First down out to 33. Glennon running for his life again and just dumps it incomplete. There was a tight end in the vicinity. Virginia Tech did decline that penalty while we were away so they got a first down. Here's the throw to the corner to Eddie Arroyo. He's got it. Touchdown. Perfect throw in the corner. 21 yard touchdown. I think they have to go for two here. I really do. To get it to a 10 point game. And they won't. Down to 12. 38 26. Three and a half minutes. Now we know. I asked you guys about uh, nine minutes ago when it's too early for an onside kick. Yeah. I don't think it's too early now. I think you'll see it now. <laughs> Brandon Pace will come in for the point after an 80 yard drive and nine plays. And the extra points up and good with 331 remaining in the ball game. Crazier things have happened. I don't think you want to go anywhere right now. 11 point ball game with 331 left in Blacksburg. 331 remaining in the ball game. Virginia Tech has just scored to cut the lead down to 11. The yellow line is where this onside kick will have to travel. Georgia Tech's got two tight ends on that side. Behind them, they've got Calvin Johnson and Pat Clark, and they go the other way instead. This is a free ball, but it is scooped up nicely by Chris Dunlap, who fielded it on one hop. So they went the other way instead of going where Georgia Tech had its all hands team, and instead, Georgia Tech will take over. When scoring 25 or more they've only lost 16 of 135 it looks like uh, that might change unless they come up with a huge defensive play here they need a turnover the Hokies play eight home games this year only four away games and one of those away games is Miami uh, in November yeah. Reggie ball this would be a sweet victory for Reggie having lost to this team the last two years for Sean Grant he gets hammered by Vince Hall. Clock working its way down to 240. Georgia Tech wants to use as much clock as possible. Grant. That's a veteran quarterback. Reggie Ball using up, snapping that ball with two seconds left on the clock. 
You know, I like to play calling, and there's one I didn't like in the regular game. I know you jumped all over me, Chris, but I didn't like it. But this one, I like these now where they where they get the backs a little bit to the outside. Take off some time. Run a little wider, but make sure you stay in bounds. But, you know, don't necessarily run right up the middle. Down two minutes. Two minutes. Woo. Third down and five. The remaining crowd, there's still a lot of them here, know that this is a play of the ball game for the Hokie defense. Play action. Reggie Ball wanted to run it. Now cuts back the other way, looking for some blockers. And he won't find enough. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Xavier Adibi made the stop. They took timeout. Virginia Tech did. And that's their last one. That was a smart call because they were just stacked in there for the, uh, for the run. Get Reggie outside. Maybe he can run it for a first down. There's what Bob talked about. Six wins over ranked opponents. Five wins on the road. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number one of the offense. Ooh. 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. It will be fourth down. Now that's not a smart play. Reggie must have said something because I didn't see any big mix up over there. And Chan Gailey wants the side judge to give him an explanation as to what Reggie might have done. I think he was chatting with Xavier Adibi a little bit. And Chan's going, well, if we can get out of here and get back to Atlanta with an 11-point win, it won't matter. But remember now, Brooks is going to be kicking from near his own goal line. Yeah. And everybody in this place knows what the guys in the Chicago maroon and burnt orange can do oh, on yeah. special teams. And they made their reputation in situations like this. Brooks just want to get this one out of there for Georgia Tech. Here they come. And he got a decent kick. Royal thinking about handling it. Now we'll let it go. But it's still excellent field position at the 42-yard line. And I think Coach Beamer is thinking, Eddie, you should have taken that thing on the hop and see what you can do. So now Sean Glennon, who threw a perfect touchdown pass to Royal the last time they had the ball, has a minute and 40, no timeouts remaining. But they need two scores, not one. Second in the conference in scoring coming in. Eddie Royal had last year had returned a punt for a touchdown mm -hmm. and had two reverses from his flanker position for touchdown. So now you can see why Frank Beamer wanted him to pick up that football. All three wide outs to the left. Here comes Wheeler after Glennon. He got around him and throws down the middle and nobody could get a hand on it. Intended for David Clowney went off his hands and then Tech almost had a chance to intercept it. I tell you what, Philip Wheeler, he just keeps coming, doesn't he? He does. And he does. And, and the way this defense is structured, it's mo a lot of it's coming off the edge. And a lot of that means you have to be picked up by a, uh, a, a blocking back or a running back. Most of those guys can't block these linebackers. A minute 29 remaining. Just a three-man rush. Nope, they're going to bring it off the corner again. Glennon completes it to Royal out of bounds first down at the Georgia Tech 42 pickup of 16. One of the things Georgia Tech does and, and they're this is a prevent defense what I call it anyway they've got six guys that are deep you want to catch that ball underneath 10 to 12 yards go ahead you can have all those you want. Texas Tech we understand did win that game big win for them down in Aggie land that's not an easy place to play. And here, this isn't an easy place either. Georgia Tech made it look easy in the first half. Virginia Tech trying to make it difficult on them here in the final minute and 22. Glennon throws incomplete, intended for Wheeler, the tight end. And K. Michael Hall, who along with Philip Wheeler, has been all over the field today, is the guy that was out there covering. Well, I tell you what, those two right there, 35 and 41, yeah. I think I could play with those two guys. Oh, you yeah. know, you can coach those guys. They just never stop. Well, one's the leading tackler and one's the second leading tackler coming into the ball game. And both are leaders of the defense. Remember, the Hokies do not have a timeout remaining. Glennon loads, fires deep. Got a man out there. Flag down. Ball is incomplete to Clowney. Kenny Scott and Jamal Lewis out there. And there's a flag at the three-yard line. This was a terrific pass, Grease. I mean, that ball was right on target. Pass interference on Georgia Tech. Clowney. Yeah, he hurt his ankle, it looked like. Remember, he's the guy. He's maybe holding his stomach. It might be where the stitches defense are. Pass interference. Number four, V3 France. 15 yards on the line of scrimmage. Oof. One night, first down. I'll tell you what, the Hokies are not giving up. Nope, first down because of the penalty. Glennon 
Waits and fires to the corner. Mm, had Justin Harper out there. Harper took a lot of time to run that route. The quarterbacks in this uh, against this defense that the uh, Yellow Jackets are throwing at him, they're not going to have that much time. He had to throw before he came out of his break, and the pass was short and too far to the far side. But uh, those are not bad numbers, and this kid, as Paul said, and Bob's mentioned several times, is shaping into a pretty darn good quarterback. He's a tough kid, I'll tell you that, because he knows these guys are just oh, teeing off he's, and coming at him. He's standing in there and throwing he's the ball. He's been getting whacked all day. Throws on the run here, delivered low to Harper, and it's going to bring up third down and long. A minute left. At Lane Stadium, Worsham Field in Blacksburg, Virginia. Number 24, Georgia Tech, you just made the top 25 after their impressive performance on ESPN on the Thursday night game a week ago. This past Thursday, moved into the number 24 spot, came in here. That's a hornet's nest. This place was going crazy at the beginning, but Georgia Tech scored three touchdowns in the first quarter. Two of them, Reggie Ball to Calvin Johnson, touchdown passes, silenced the crowd. Now they're trying to hang on here in the last minute. Last complete to Royal again. And Royals got a first down inside the 20. 11 yard pass play. <laughs> I think you know what else is good? This is kind of neat because your offensive lineman, you're caught in the middle of the field. And, and that bunch, you can hold all you want. I'm, I'm telling you, they're just pulling these guys to the ground. Robertson, number 90, went down. He complained to the official. He was tackled. Royal now over 100 yards through the air. And Harper. And Hyman go up to the right side and Royal down to the bottom of your screen on a first down from the 17. Looking for Royal. Now he's going to go the other way. Jump ball to Harper. In and out of his hands and he's out of bounds. And Kenny Scott says he pushed off over there and no flag on the play. Second down. He, he's got some poise, Bob. Lennon for, you know, sophomore oh, yeah. guy oh, first time. He, he's learning. This is a great learning process for him. He's getting to throw a lot of passes against a tough defense. They're putting pressure on him. And he has to bring his club from behind. This will make him better whether they get from behind or not. Clowney comes back into the lineup. That wide receiver, one of the three out there. Second down at 10. Sean's loading and has time. Throws complete. Hyman down at the 10-yard line. Remember, they have no timeouts left. Clock continues to run. And they have a third down. They've got two plays left, but they got to hustle. Glennon trying to get them lined up. In the gun, bad snap. He picks it up. Flags are down. I think the penalty is going to be for some motion on Virginia Tech before the snap, but let's wait and see. Clock stopped with the flag with 20 seconds remaining. Going to have to run off 10 seconds here, too, huh? Defensively. And it'll bring up a third down and long. Illegal motion. Number 19 was never set before the snap. Five yards in line of scrimmage. Repeat third down. So it's third and 15. And we're down to 20 seconds is all that remains. Line of scrimmage now back at the 15 yard line. Glennon waits and fires. He's got Royal open and he overshot him. Out in the flat. Darrell Robertson with the hit on Glennon. And we're down to. The last chance right now for Virginia Tech. Fourth down and nine. First down would be at the seven yard line, but they're thinking points and they're thinking how many opportunities they're going to even have. So they got to go something to the end zone here to try to score a touchdown and then come up with a miracle finish. Georgia Tech's defense knows that. Glennon to the end zone. And it is broken up and a flag comes in. Penalty marker down. Jahi Ward Daniels and Jamal Lewis were out there. So it's not over yet. Bob Greasy's a little frustrated right now. He's mad. <laughs> what are you mad at? Well, I know I just want to see if this was interference or not. No, no I don't think not. so. He never it touched it. He never got touched. The official in the interference. <laughs> 34 in the defense. No. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. I gotta tell you, this crew has had a couple problems right. today. The back judge, the guy that threw it, he just I mean, just I mean, threw it. Yeah, he, and I mean, I'm, you know, I'm on the side of the officials unless they're. I mean, we looked at it. That, that was not pass he, interference. He never got touched. Might be the final play of the ball game. Three seconds remaining, and so now we will be down, barring a defensive penalty, which you never know. Virginia Tech will fall to four and one, but there'll be a reversal in the coastal top spot. 
in the ACC because now Georgia Tech will be in the driver's seat having beaten these guys. Of course Georgia Tech's got Miami the last Saturday of October in Atlanta. And if Miami works its way back in that'll be a huge ball game. They've got Clemson in two weeks. They got Maryland at home next week. Here's the lob. Jahi Daniels. Now that's pass interference. <laughs> well at least they didn't call that. They must have finally realized that they did have dinner reservations before nine. It's all over. Final score 38 27 our Chevrolet players of the game to shard choice over 100 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Justin Harper went over 100 yards on four catches for Virginia Tech in recognition of their efforts. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. That's going to wrap it up. Reggie Ball finally beats Virginia Tech. For Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, and Bonnie Burns team, Brad Nessler, so long from Blacksburg. So that's going to do it. 38-27. Final score. Big win for Georgia Tech on the road over a top 15 team.